Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Engine uh, of Lisp Game Engine in Lisp Devlog. So today is week six of 2024, and uh, this week I've been mostly working on the graphical user interface problems. So I have this library I man maintain. It's called CL Libellegra Nuclear. It is basically the wrapper for the C low level library. Uh, called Nuclear, uh, used together with another low-level library, Libellegro, and uh, yeah, that's the Lisp binding for that. So this library needed uh, some amount of love uh, of recently, I mean, don't we all, sometime. Uh, so yeah, I've updated the version of the bundled um, Nuclear, nuclear libraries, so it's all in the repository now, and you can also install this uh, library from our uh, like Quicklisp uh, Quick, Quick uh, distribution index. It's called like Lambda, so uh, it's it is looking like that. You can just execute this code in your Lisp implementation and have it. So yeah, I've updated it just recently. Uh, so yeah, all the links uh, to that stuff would be below under the video. So what else? Yeah, I've updated it to the latest uh, version of that library and I've tried to do the thing that I was going to do for a long time. I've tried to implement some kind of uh, like declarative DSL for that uh, library. So um, the idea is to use the power, uh, the power of macro, the power of Lisp macro to actually uh, like do and uh, make some kind of way to uh, like declaratively uh, describe your API. So I've brainstormed a little with the chat GPT about what the declarative UI even means. And yeah, I came up with this kind of design. So you should actually use the package local nickname for the, uh, for this uh, bit. So I actually haven't committed this yet because frankly, this is a nightmare. So if you go to this declarative, like this is, I mean, this code needs some formatting and there's a lot of to-dos and yeah, this is just a mess. So I'm not ready to commit that yet, but it kind of somehow a little bit, it works. So it kind of works so you can make this very simple like description of your UI. It's a very basic one with just one window. I mean, the window is like the entry point to this API. So like it's a basic unit of the of this GUI. So you make the window, you type in the title of that window, some of its parameters, like width and where is it on the screen, like X, Y, width and height, uh, then some flags perhaps, if you like, and then you just start a body of Lisp forms. This is the actual Lisp code, so you can do anything in there. And you can also call another macrosys from this uh, library. I mean, what's the plural for macros? Ma 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 is it? macros? Uh, anyway, you can call uh, like all of the macros from that declarative part of the library. I mean, you can, for instance, call button label, which will draw a button. And then again, uh, like within this macro, within the body of this macro, you can type in any Lisp code, which will be executed when the button is pressed. So it kind of looks like that. So let's maybe try and load this file. I think it should work as of now. So let's do that. Yeah, let's wait until the whole stuff loads and then hopefully, yeah, it does work. So it does work. You can see that window. You can even move that because it has the flags of border and movable. So you, yeah, you can move that. You can press this button here and yeah, you can definitely see that uh, this code works. So we have the string button pressed printed in the REPL. So yeah, that works. And I mean, you can even do some uh, more complex stuff. But yeah, the idea here is that uh, this UI window, it basically expands to a Lambda form. So it returns an unnamed function. And you can put this function somewhere on, or you can call it right away. But some, uh, yes, uh, there are some uh, like uh, additional details there. But yeah, the idea is that you put it to some variable like window with stars here, and then you fun call this function. Yeah, you call it with the context argument, which is actually the entry point to that C library nuclear. So you create that uh, context with the call to 
let me remember with the call to Allegro init and K Allegro init, you just create that thing with font and display, etc. You get this context, and then yeah, you just fun call this uh, thing which uh, was returned from this declarative UI. You just call it with a context. And the thing is, you can also supply additional parameters to it, like in this second example. So let's just comment out this bit and uncomment this one. So we can have this more complex window. I mean, in this second argument, we can specify the actual like additional argument list to this function, because I mean, this is a function. This is a functional programming, right? At least a little bit. So we can specify additional parameters to that function and we can supply this function with that parameters, right? So here I specified that additionally, uh, like in addition to context, this um, window function would take progress and file parameters. And this would be actually the progress of some progress bar uh, and the name of the file that is kind of being loaded right now. So we also supply here additional keyword arguments, which would become the variables inside of that function. So we specify image normal, image cursor, and it becomes image normal variable here and image cursor variable here. Right. So then again, here we have some additional like complex macro. We have this uh, layout space. So everything within this macro is being laid out as it uh, like mentioned here. I mean, this is just a thin wrapper around the uh, nuclear function like NK layout space. So to understand how to make the uh, link out of those widgets, you actually have to read the documentation of nuclear library. But still, it's kind of the nice syntax uh, without like too much detail, too much low level detail, like all the context crap and proper type conversions. I mean, you can specify like integer, you can specify a floating point, it would be converted to the proper type the library needs. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, so yeah, we here we do some uh, lean uh, out of those widgets and then we call a uh, styles macro, which also is an important macro. It actually like allows allows to set some kind of styling to our widgets, right? So we set the uh, like image for the progress bar, we set the uh, like image for progress bar having some progress, actually we set some padding for this um, progress bar and here we go we just call ui progress we supply it with the keyword argument current which is the actual number from zero to hundred the actual progress of that progress bar and then we also draw a label so it's basically a text with the well text loading yada yada loading this file and let's try and run it and oh yeah let's just press this thing yeah of course yeah, right. The thing is that we forgot, well, I forgot to supply this additional argument. So we have like progress and file, right? So I have here some little uh, like uh, fake code that just gets the list of the files in current library like that. And just uh, then we just change it every frame to the next file to display. So let's try and run it now. Um, right, yeah, so this is how it's supposed to work. So as you can see, uh, the progress bar like starts and moves as it should. And it also prints the text for this, um, <clears throat> uh, like for this file being loaded. And it happens pretty fast. So we don't have a lot of CPU load for that, right? I mean, most of this CPU load we see here is generated by OBS. I record this video with. Uh, so yeah, this kind of works. And we also can even see the internals of that uh, function being generated by this um, kind of uh, declarative UI, right? So we can just use the standard function disassemble. So come on, disassemble. And we can use this window variable, right? Because we put the result of that to this variable here. So we can have a look and we can see that it is, okay, what is it? It is only like one and a half kilobyte of binary code. And I mean, it's not that much like for this beautiful thingy, like, like this um, background and this 
this nice uh, progress bar that is moving back and forth and all of this text that's being drawn here. I mean, this is okay, this is fine. So as we can see, it calls some low level C functions like uh, label aggro, nuclear style push, style item, style item image, etc. It calls all of that crap. And yeah, it has a few of memory allocations namely three. So yeah, I, I would be working on improving that as well and removing this memory allocations because it kind of affects the performance. But yeah, there is a lot of work to do in this interface, but this is a sketch and this works. I kind of like it because like you can have this kind of declarative uh, UI and uh, yeah, I mean, it's the first step, right? So I also posted it on Reddit and I asked about the feedback on that. So here's the thread and I already had some nice feedback, some uh, nice pointers to different like libraries to have a look to another uh, GUI libraries for Common Lisp. So I would definitely have a look uh, on uh, like on that. Um, so yeah, I will also post the link below under the video. Uh, so what's next? What is another big thing for this week? So yeah, another big thing is that I um, kind of enlisted for this game jam called Untitled Game Jam. Um, <clears throat> So it would end in eight days, so basically the next Monday, I mean the, the Monday after the next. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's kind of a little bit of time to work, I mean not too much, not too little. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, we would be working on that, so yeah, we would be working uh, like it would be me and my mate which uh, helps me with the like game design stuff. So we decided uh, this time to make some kind of puzzle uh, in a sci-fi setting. And yeah, it would be nice. It would be a nice challenge to try and fit the puzzle mechanics into the uh, like ECS like library and into ECS framework. Uh, I also have developed for this uh, engine of mine. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, I think all of the stuff I've been working on this week. So yeah, we already have picked I think the tile set to be used for this game. And yeah, the next week I would be working on actually fitting the puzzle mechanics into the ECS. I, uh, I think that would be fun. Uh, so yeah, and except that, I have some thoughts about how my final game engine would be uh, like uh, laid out, how the architecture of that uh, would be. I mean, I had some nice ideas and I have to explore them. So I guess I would do that later, like after the next week. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's that. That's what I was busy with this week. And uh, yeah, the next week would be this uh, game jam um, participation. So yeah, uh, that's all from me for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want more, subscribe to my Twitch channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, thanks and see you next week. Bye.